Welcome back to the Capital 10X interview series. The explosion in sales of electric vehicles has created a once in a generation investment opportunity in the battery metal space. Specifically, we see demand for copper, lithium, and nickel potentially exceeding supply for the rest of this decade at least. In today's interview, we're talking to the CEO of a diversified explorer and producer with leverage to all three battery metals. I'm pleased to be joined by Robin Denbar, CEO of Grid Metals. Grid is unique among companies we follow as you have exposure to three of the most in-demand battery metals. Robin, for those who don't know Grid as well as we do, can you start with a brief overview of your assets and where you plan to operate? Geographically, we're in Southeast Manitoba. We're about an hour and a half uh, east of Winnipeg. Um, and our uh, asset base consists of nickel, copper, uh, platinum group metals and lithium. So the nickel, copper, platinum group metals occur together in, in uh, a base metal deposit. And uh, lithium is uh, in the same area but obviously different type of deposits. So that's, that's our, our current focus is, is really base metals and lithium. You have a significant asset footprint and many moving parts. Can you simplify things for people watching and tell us what are the next few operational catalysts? Sure, yeah, so we, we divided uh, you know, broadly between our lithium assets and the base metal assets. Um, you know, we've been drilling actively on our lithium assets. Uh, the, the, the catalyst there is we want to end up with a, a resource. So we've, we've drilled um, about 50 holes since October, and we're starting to um, announce those holes, and then we'll do a, uh, a mineral resource uh, for lithium. Um, and that uh, is, is similar to what we're doing in the base metals, although we've done, we've completed our drilling there and we're in the process of uh, uh, putting together a new resource on that project. So a minerals resource will be um, uh, put out to the market uh, in the next uh, you know, month or so. You announced promising lithium drill results yesterday at your Donner Lake property. What are your plans for Donner Lake and when do you expect analytical results to come back for those recent drill samples? We just uh, announced a couple of days ago the first six holes from the program, um, and I think we'll probably end up drilling in the range of 50 holes in this round. So lots more drilling and results to come, and those will come out over the next two to three months. Um, and, and then we take that, the results of those, uh, that drilling and, and work we did previously uh, and, and come up with a, a resource estimate. And what's kind of unique about what we're going to do with that is you know, we're looking at uh, uh, the oppor oppor opportunity to uh, do a toll milling operation with, with the Tanko mine. So the uh, only operation uh, operating uh, lithium mine in Canada is, is right next to where we are. So we want to have a resource and able to do the economic studies for that. Can you put on your geologist hat for a minute and tell us about your unique knowledge of the Fox River belt in Manitoba, a potential major nickel source? What are some of the indicators you're looking for that will tell us if it can be as big as the Raglan belt in Quebec? So that's a, that's another uh, asset that we have in the com uh, company. And, um, you know, the we call those our mineral exploration licenses or MELs. They're located in northern uh, Manitoba up by the Thompson nickel belt. There we have three properties that we've, we've uh, been doing some work on. Um, the one is very similar to the uh, Raglan belt, um, and and you know we expect to uh, uh, get into the position to drill that sometime next year. We have two others, uh, two other mills. One is uh, it's similar to the Nova Bollinger discovery in Australia, which is the last large nickel discovery made in Australia. So altogether, that mill package is extremely exciting. It's the right geology, um, and then very importantly, we have a very strong technical staff uh, led by Dave Peck. Uh, for nickel exploration. So that's something that's going to take a little longer uh, to develop, but it's a uh, it's great upside for the company uh, in, in, in the nickel side. You signed one of the smartest pre-production agreements we've ever seen with Tanko Mines. Can you tell our listeners the details of the agreement and what it allows you to do as far as speeding up the development and significantly cutting upfront capital costs? The Tanko Mine is currently the only producing lithium mine in Canada, and that's right next to our, our project in Manitoba. And so they are expanding their operation and looking for more feed, sources of feed uh, for their mill. So we've signed an, an MOU uh, to cover off the, the things we need to do to get a toll milling operation uh, in place. And that is, you know, number one, testing the ore to see, you know, can it be milled and, and how much we, uh, the lithium we recover, then doing a bulk sample. And we hope to do that later this year and then uh, entering into a mining agreement. And, Basically, what we want to do is get into production quickly, capture the high lithium prices that are currently, um, you know, in place in the world, 
and uh, without having to build our own mining plant, which will cost, you know, in the tens of millions of dollars to do. So uh, sooner to production, uh, catch the high nickel prices, or uh, catch the high lithium prices, and uh, not have to build our own plant. So, you know, there's, uh, there's a uh, a great uh, impetus to get that agreement done and, and uh, move along as quickly as, as possible. Based on your outlook for nickel, copper and lithium, how would you rank those metals in terms of importance to grid? I would actually say that, you know, the nickel copper side is, 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 is probably about 50% of the, you know, the, the value and interest in the company and the lithium is the other 50%. You know, while the, you know, the nickel copper uh, project is more advanced, uh, you know, we have about $4 billion of metal in the ground there. Um, you know, right now, a lot of the buzz in the market is, is in the lithium side. So, you know, we think they're, they're, they're both located close together. They, you know, they're going to have a lot of synergies. Um, but what it really does is it gives us, uh, you know, if, if the price of one goes down and the other stays high, well, we can focus more attention on the other. So we're not just a one trick pony. That's the beauty of diversification. Can you take us through the most important catalyst to watch for in 2023? Certainly, the drilling that we're doing right now is a, is is going to be a huge catalyst. And as we progress towards um, establishing an initial resource, um, the progression of our deal with Tanco, um, and try to get that uh, project into production as soon as, as possible. So you know, there's going to be a lot of work done this year. And then on the uh, the the nickel side, our new uh, resource for our uh, Macquarie Mabel project, which is coming, you know, in the next quarter. That's going to be, uh, I think, a good catalyst. So we've got a lot of things going on in the company, um, and it's a pretty exciting time for us. Those were some great insights. Thanks, Robin.